Hey Lore Lovers, my name's Eric with the Lorebrarians YouTube channel, and in today's video we've got quite an interesting but largely unknown story to dig into, the entirety of which is encapsulated within the flavor text of six cards from the 2020 core set. It's a short but emotionally charged narrative, telling of acts of courage, moments of disaster, and relentless tests of faith. This is the tale of the Siege of the Bone Spire. But before we begin, if you're a fan of lore and storytelling, or if Magic the Gathering is dear to you, consider subscribing to the channel where lore videos are uploaded weekly. The support is much appreciated. Alright, let's dive in. The Siege of the Bone Spire is presented to us in the flavor text of Corpse Knight, Dark Remedy, Dawning Angel, Legion's End, Show of Valor, and Zephyr Charge. All are entries in either a history or report given by an individual known only as Cornea. Not much else is known about the author or the conflict. We've got no way of determining on which plane it occurred, and we have no other geographical information other than the Bone Spire itself. Further, we aren't sure at what point in the overall history of the multiverse this transpired, or even what sides specifically were involved. All we have to go from is a loosely tied narrative of an army marching into battle against a necromancer who resides in the Bone Spire and their undead hordes in hopes of claiming glory and victory for their queen. Cornea was perhaps an active combatant in the siege, or maybe an inquisitive onlooker remaining a safe distance from a bloodshed, or even a historian looking into the past to construct the tale of the siege. Cornea's logs are as follows. With each knight that rode out from the Bone White Keep, the Queen's soldiers felt their courage failing. Corpse Knight depicts such a chilling outrider stalking the battlefield. Writhing tendrils of darkness stitched him back together. Though his will and body both were broken, the necromancer's magic would not let him rest. Dark Remedy shows us the fate of the Queen's soldiers that fall on the battlefield, twisted and transformed into undead. Dawning Angel gives us a glimpse of faith rewarded and renewed. As the sun rose behind the bone spire, an angel appeared over the charnel fields, bringing a surge of new hope. With a single word, they were unmade. Legion's End's foreboding flavor text and illustration show us what happens when the necromancer's true might is unleashed. As the knight struggled to stand, his squire took up his blade. The foe advanced not a single step. Show of Valor depicts stalwart courage in the face of horrifying defeat, and we see a ghostly image behind the squire of the knight they may one day turn to be. The last entry comes in the card Zephyr Charge. The knights charged forward on wings of wind, and the necromancer's horde roared in helpless rage. What's most fascinating about these entries is that there's no definitive arrangement as to what order these events take place, and as such is open to interpretation. Depending on how they are structured, the Seizure of the Bone Spire is a tale of tragic loss and holy redemption, of brazen aggression and stunning defeat, or anything in between. After much thinking over, I'd like to present a couple of my own arrangements for Cornea's tale. They are by no means the correct order, but they do make for an interesting story, at least in my opinion. I'd love to hear yours in the comments below. The first arrangement begins with the Queen's army spurred into a frontal assault on the Necromancer's fortress on wings of wind in Zephyr Charge, but then the Necromancer calls forth powerful magic and with a single word ends the Legion's attack, only to call their fallen friends from beyond the grave to join the hordes of undead in Dark Remedy. Now locked in a bloody melee in which each soldier slain adds to the army of the Necromancer, the Queen's army feels their hearts sink, especially once the doors to the Bone Spire open to unleash undead riders. Encircled by rows and rows of disgusting vile zombies, the army is trapped. The number of knights has dwindled so much that now squires take up arms and prevent the undead from advancing. With all hope seemingly extinguished, Day breaks, and the sun emerges from behind the Bone Spire, bringing with it an angelic host of crusaders to cleanse the battlefield of undeath. Another arrangement begins in the midst of the carnage, as writhing tendrils from the necromancer's magic give life to the recently deceased. With zombies being cut to ribbons and soldiers being torn apart, a knight falls and his squire picks up his sword to continue the fight. The queen's soldiers make a valiant stand, perhaps even turning the tides into their favor until the gates of the fortress open and a host of corpse knights pour forth, riding down and slaying routed soldiers. 
And at that moment, the Necromancer unleashes a spell to wipe entire legions from existence. Just as the final strands of hope fall from the army's grasp, they can do little more than pray. And their prayers are answered with the dawning of the sun as angels come down from the heavens to aid the queen's army, granting their knights the ability to fly. The knights lead a windborne charge over the undead and head straight to the source, slaying the necromancer in his keep and saving their countrymen. Although the coming of the angels in triumph of good over evil seems most natural and likely with the siege of the Bone Spire, it could very well be that the necromancer claimed ultimate victory. Perhaps the events of Corpse Knight, Dark Remedy, and Show of Valor occur first. Then the angels descend and the knights charge on the wind, flying over the droves of undead toward the necromancer. But the vile wizards save their most powerful spell for the right moment, turning the angelic host and the legions into nothingness, black ash and oblivion. And perhaps to this day, the Bone Spire stands mighty over a haunted field of death and decay. One fascinating detail that has me believe good triumphed over evil is seen in the illustration of Show of Valor. This card had a prior printing in earlier sets, with an illustration of a woman saving a child from danger. If we compare the two, we can see that the squire bears a likeness to the knight, perhaps the same individual from different points in time. Although the plate and mail seen in each card are somewhat generic, they do have some resemblance. Perhaps the squire survives the battle only to join the Queen's ranks and protect the innocent from the Necromancer's retribution. One final note of coincidence comes to us in the form of a short story written on the Wizard's website in 2013, titled A Blessed Life. It tells the tale of a soldier in general leading his nation's armies in a losing war against a terrible Necromancer. I won't spoil the ending and if you want to read it yourself, I'll have a link in the description. This story shares many major themes of the Siege of Bonespire, but without specific information to tell us where and when it takes place, one can only theorize. Thanks for watching this video on the Siege of Bonespire. Leave a thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe for weekly lore content. And now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on Cronea, the Siege, and how you would arrange the story, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. The references used can be found in the description. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.